Hello everyone, it is time. It is time for the damage test that you have been waiting for. Yes, the Whisper Catalyst was available to get for the first time this week, along with me actually getting my Sleeper Catalyst done as well. So it's time to see how good Whisper of the Worm actually is and why that is a good thing or maybe a bad thing. We'll have a little discussion at the end. In this video, we'll be looking at Whisper's capabilities versus Darcy versus Sleeper with all Catalyst. Darcy Catalyst, well, doesn't really matter for this test. We'll be testing mainly on Argos in the normal version of the raid since the prestige mode is, well, not consistent at all. But I also ran some simulations for Valkaur as well. Why is Whisper so good? Well quick history lesson here. It is a recreation of Black Hammer from Destiny 1, a weapon that, if you were good enough, could shoot forever, non-stop. It was recreated as Black Spindle in late Destiny 1, minus the part that generates ammo from thin air. But now, it is back. It has insane impact and pulls ammo from thin air yet again. Needless to say, that makes it an insanely good boss-killing weapon. First though, we need to establish a baseline damage value. On Argos, regardless of if your weapon is 385 or 405, it will deal 77,034 damage on a crit without box breathing. This is because Argos is only a level 300 enemy, and with the way that Destiny scales damage, when you are that much higher than your opponent, everything just deals the same damage regardless of its power level. This is to prevent higher level players from completely steamrolling lower level content. The game actually tones down your damage. For the rest of the video, I'll be under the assumption that you have some form of auto reload buff, whether it be Barrier, Rift, or Whisper's main perk. Important to note that if you use Whisper of the Worm in a Luna Faction buffed Rift, the white nail perk breaks and the gun will continuously take your ammo. That being said, a Luna Rift provides a safety cushion in case you miss and break your crit streak and isn't unreasonable to use in tandem with Whisper anyway. A typical Argos damage phase lasts 25 seconds, or rather the unstable energy boost buff lasts approximately that long, so that's where we'll focus our damage. That means, in theory, you're capable of about 30 shots using Whisper at its rate of 72 RPM or 1.2 shots per second. That's just over 2.3 million damage with 30 shots. And keep in mind, we're not using any damage buffs when doing weapon testing, so this can go higher. Getting 30 shots is pretty difficult though, since you need to worry about the prisms and the minotaurs and harpies. And on average, if you don't miss, and if the gun does not glitch out on you, you should expect to hit about 24 to 28 shots, which is still really good. Then we have Darcy, which we've tested before, but we'll quickly go over it. It takes about 10 seconds to fire 23 shots of Darcy, and at 51,964 damage per shot, that gets us just under 1.2 million damage, which is also pretty good. A pace that is actually better than Whisper without its catalyst. The difference is that with Darcy, well, eventually we run out of ammo, and the only thing that can be used that can keep up with that damage pace at all is top tree hammers with Syntheseps. Assuming you have the Biotic Enhancement buff the entire time, and you're using the Leviathan class item, which you should be, and you stand far enough from the boss to get the maximum hammer damage possible, you can do up to 1.2 million damage in hammers alone. From the first tick of your super energy dropping to the first frame that the final hammer leaves your hand, it takes about 8 seconds. In most cases, a full stack of Darcy and a full set of hammers is about what you'll be capable of doing in a single damage cycle on Argos, getting us around 2.2 to 2.4 million damage. Again, no empowering rift used. In terms of pure damage per second output, Darcy takes it over Whisper with no catalyst while both weapons are active by almost 30,000 damage per second. So, we're looking about the same then. 
Yeah, Darcy and Hammers versus Whisper with no catalyst is about the same potential performance. Well, two things. Number one, if you don't have Hammers, your follow-up after your Darcy ammo runs out is incredibly weak at best. And two, we still haven't even discussed the catalyst for Whisper. Whisper's catalyst gives it box breathing, which is the same perk as the Ikelos Sniper, where aiming for a short time will increase your damage. In Whisper's case, this damage increase is 30%, bringing that 77,000 per shot up to 100,144 damage per shot. Now you're speaking my language, but important to note, Box Breathing's benefit entirely depends on you not descoping for any reason. If you have to reload or you have to descope, your damage will definitely be impacted. Assuming you're able to proc the Box Breathing buff before Unstable Energy Boost and maximize your shots, that's up to 3 million damage in a single cycle with no rift, 30 shots. Are you going to get 30 shots every time? Probably not. It's really hard to do. But you could do 24 to 28 shots, and then you're still looking at 2.4 to 2.8 million damage. In some tests we did for this video, I got 26, 27, someone else got 29, one person did actually get a 30, so it's definitely possible to hit those upper levels. Unsurprisingly, Whisper is going to be the pick here from me in most cases. In terms of DPS versus Darcy, Whisper with the Catalyst technically still doesn't beat it out while both weapons are active. It loses by about a thousand damage. But that ultimately doesn't really matter, as if you're not a Titan, you don't have a follow-up after Darcy that would beat or even come close to Whisper. Now, I say most cases. The problem with Argos, and by extension Valkaur, is that you don't get to stand in one spot and just never move. I mean, sometimes you do, but sometimes you don't. We went over this in the previous video, but any time that you need to descope with box breathing, it's a big hit to your damage. With Whisper, it takes almost two seconds to get box breathing back online, and if you wait it out, that's the equivalent of about 1.5 shots wasted. If you descope two times, that's three shots gone. If you have to reload, that's about another two to three shots, gone. Whisper's damage potential completely relies on not missing and never reloading, whereas Darcy is much more forgiving with descoping and movement. There will be times where a Darcy plus Hammer user will beat a Whisper user simply because of movement issues or having to reload or missing shots. Minotaurs, Harpies, other adds, Prism attacks, fire on the ground, you name it, it will cause a problem. But I still feel pretty confident saying that if you're not using hammers, you should be using Whisper, and even if you are using hammers, you have a higher potential using Whisper. But what about Sleeper Simulant, you ask? Well, the previous video determined that just going for crits was not going to be enough to match Darcy, and that going for ricochets off the back of the Crystal Shield was too inconsistent and too difficult of an experience for the average player. Now, we have the Catalyst, giving us more ammo and faster charge times. Does that change things enough? Not quite. Pre-Masterwork, Sleeper took 12 seconds to fire all eight of its shots. Technically 11.5 seconds, but it's essentially 12 with human error. Post Masterwork, Sleeper takes 13 seconds to fire all 10 of its shots. So about one extra second for two extra shots. 95,355 damage times 10 shots divided by 13 seconds to fire is 73,350 DPS. A vast improvement over the previous, but it still takes 13 seconds to do what Darcy can do in about 8. Despite that, we still fire the gun faster, and this could open up some possibilities. As we previously established, if you somehow managed to hit Argos with the initial beam and all 5 ricochet lasers, you would do 202,240 damage. This times 10 is just over 2 million damage in 13 seconds, or 155,000 DPS. That is really good. That is better than Darcy, and that's better than Whisper. The problem, again, is that this is 
pretty hard to do and will continue to be hard to do and generally speaking, not really worth bothering with. I don't know of anyone who has bothered to mess at all with this method of damage. Not to mention that, again, if you're not a Hammer Titan, you have a very weak follow-up after that anyway. One good thing about Sleeper is that it is pretty easy to handle comparatively to the Snipers. If you're not on PC, then spamming Darcy or Whisper at their max rates of fire might be hard to do, whereas with Sleeper, well, that's a bit easier to handle. With Valkaur, again, it is an inconsistent damage fight. Sometimes you get melted by tons of fire and you need to move a lot. Sometimes you can just drill them over and over again. Either way, it's a very similar situation to Argos, where generally speaking, I would suggest using Whisper for damage. Although funny enough, a 385 Ikelo Sniper that is hitting Valkaur with a Tractor Cannon debuff actually does about 10,000 more DPS than a 405 Whisper. And we're working with much smaller numbers here, so that is very significant. But again, the problem is that after those eight seconds of perfect shooting, well, you have another 10 to 15 seconds to do damage. So while your DPS will be insane for those first eight to 10 seconds, it's gonna fall off a cliff after that, where Whisper will then take over. The only time you need to kill him that quickly is with a Ward Cliff or Ikelo Shotgun strategy. Otherwise, it's fine to use that extra time to bring him down. And that's where Whisper is really going to come in handy. Now, one more thing, speaking of the Ikelo Shotgun, while I didn't do any official tests with the Ikelo Shotgun, that weapon is still likely to be the undisputed king of burst damage until something else takes it down. Nightfall scoring boss kills, Valkor shotgun speed kills, anything that needs to be bursted down, especially with Luna Faction the way that they are, the Ikelo shotgun is still insanely good and will continue to be the king of burst damage until a new weapon shows up. Most of that is pretty much anecdotal experience going with really hard Nightfall scoring runs, but yeah. Now if there's one thing to take away from this video, if there's one thing to learn, just skip through it and you just want the... Here's the thing. It is that Darcy can get to a higher DPS than Whisper. But Whisper will generally beat it over any period of time longer than about 9 seconds or so as long as you're hitting all of your shots. 9 seconds is the breaking point to where Whisper with Catalyst overtakes Darcy. And that is just the weapons. It doesn't include anything else. Without the Catalyst, the breaking point is around 13 or 14 seconds. Whisper also gains the benefit of potentially wasting zero ammo on other targets if you hit your shots. But Whisper entirely relies on hitting crits, and not getting white nail to proc will be a big blow to your potential damage output. Now, Whisper worries me, and I realize what I'm about to say is probably not going to make people happy, but just hear me out. I did want to make another video talking about this, but I didn't want to be Captain Buzzkill about Black Hammer returning, and now it seems like an okay time to bring it up. There's a reason I think Whisper of the Worm will potentially be bad for the game in the future, and that's because of how good it actually is. We all know by now that in order for loot to be replaced, it needs to be replaced with something that is definitely way better. Black Hammer had to be reborn as a nerfed version of itself in Destiny 1, and now we have the original Black Hammer back. I've talked about boring loot in the past, and while Whisper itself isn't boring, it's exciting to have back, I am the kind of person who doesn't want to have the same loadout be the best for a long time. This is why I am still worried about something like Midnight Coup sticking around. It can make all other loot irrelevant, simply because Midnight Coup is so good. Now we have a looter game where a lot of players might not care about loot. Some people are totally fine with that. I totally get why. I'm just saying that I think Whisper potentially being the best weapon for the next year or two might get a little stale. And I wonder what Bungie intends to do, if anything, about that. It's obviously very tough to tell what's gonna happen with all the weapon changes coming up and all of that. But I just wonder how this issue is gonna be approached. And I swear on me mum, if anyone in the comments says I'm trying to get this nerfed, I will kiss you right on the mouth. That is not the point I'm trying to make, all right?
Anyway, this is the final DPS video until the Dreaming City is on farm status. If you enjoyed this video, a positive rating would be great. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.